Um, Gabe Newell, Flashlight Donut says, Don't know if you've seen this before, but it's very relevant. What? Relevant to what? No, no gold though today, guys. We have not even seen or been graced by the presence of gold. Is that Phantom Lord? Is it? Bottom right is not screaming. Well, I'm not impressed with this design, if I'm gonna be honest. Weapon finishes are, by definition, luxury goods. They're things that our customers like to have, but they're not actually necessary in order to play the game. In fact, they don't have any gameplay impact at all. After all, if you got a rare item, you'd like it because it was rare, even if it was an aesthetic that you didn't appreciate. I don't give a crap what it looks like, bro. That's a freaking knife, dude. It's just a piece of fucking texture, and you literally pay for it. I don't understand. What gives you that little appealing? What is it? We're making millions and millions of dollars off this system. Like, this is what a have successful I, system looks this? like for us. The thing that we don't control is the rate at which cases are opened. I think I might have seen this. Whenever I see someone purchase one of these things, and I've done this before, even to myself, when I purchase one of these things, I look like a fucking idiot. There was no way as a customer to look at that transaction besides I just lost $2 of actual value. The goal was not to put users in a position where they were gambling. It was to put them in a position where they had random chances, and there's, there's a fundamental difference there. Back in July of 2015, Valve sent out a request via email to various server owners. The email requested that server owners remove plugins that can change weapon skins over CSGO items that are not in their inventory. Uh, are there any uh, special upcoming hats for Team Fortress 2? Uh, we got the shit foil hat coming out. And, uh, you know, we have a snow dog hat. We first showed Team Fortress 2 at E3 in 1999, and here we are in 2007, so what took us so long? With nine classes of characters and so many weapons and unique abilities, one of our biggest challenges was exposing all these combinations to players without overwhelming them. Through very intentional art direction, this goal was supported by designing characters with distinct silhouettes that can be easily identified even with no lighting cues. The body proportions, weapons, and silhouette lines were explicitly designed to give each character a unique silhouette, so the players are able to quickly identify other players in the game and assess the possible threat. Which totally begs the question, a very, very justified question by the fanbase, what happened to Team Fortress 2? Look at me, Arnold! Look at me! They don't think about the fact that, yeah man, I just put some money down the drain on a little paint that someone else made. It's the type of person who's focused totally on himself and his needs, almost to the exclusion of everyone else. It stems from a myth in Greek mythology in which a person, that he's looking for the perfect mate. At any rate, he chances upon a pond and he sits down next to the pond and he sees the reflection of himself and he becomes in love with himself he's so beautiful he's so handsome and he just sits there and stares at himself totally wrapped up in himself until eventually he shrivels up and dies
surely you understand, it'll never be enough. So you have to ask yourself, when you finally get the ultimate promotion, when you've made the ultimate purchase and climbed the ladder of success to the highest rung you can possibly climb it, and the thrill wears off, and it will wear off, then what? How far do you have to walk down that road before you see where it leads? None of it was really yours. You got all heated up about it for a while. It's pretty dramatic. Pretty dramatic, I must say. Uh, Anthony says hello.